Dave, if you want to pull a chair out here to sit on, I don't care. All right. And again, there's your cheat sheets. If you yep. Want. All right. All right, good afternoon, wrestling fans. This is Kevin Burke along with Aaron Moss, and we're going to be bringing you the 23rd annual Illinois-Indiana All-Star Classic. We're down here in Prairie Central Convention Center in Springfield, Illinois. And, Aaron, we're going to, for an interesting day, we've got two different duels, and I know on the Illinois side their goal is to win them both. Aaron, by the way, he's our representative. He's going to be... He's from Indiana, Zionsville High School there, so he's going to be helping me out as far as some background and some of these Indiana kids. We'll be referring to the mats as far as our left and our right, as far as doing things, and we'll try and keep you up to date. We'll be switching back and forth with our broadcast. You can see both of them on the feed that you have. And Aaron, I know in Illinois this is real important to our, our coaches association, and in Indiana, I got to assume it's the same thing? Absolutely, it's an awesome event. Uh, kind of finish up these guys' senior year. Um, guys are really proud to represent, come over here and wrestle some top wrestling from Illinois. So we're, we're out to win it just like you guys are, and we'll see what happens at the end. All right, be real competitive. Well, we have here at 106, Indiana, one of their boys couldn't make it, so they've, their boy's going to wrestle two different times. He'll start on the mat to our right, and then he'll finish off on the mat to the left. So he'll wrestle first over here and then last over on the other one. Yeah, Alex is a tough kid, signed up to do both matches. What a way to you know, represent his school and do well uh, on both sides of the mat. And he's wrestling Juan Ortega from Round Lake. No, or excuse me, Illinois will be green on the scoreboard for you. And Indiana will be red as our guest. Alex Greeno is from South Mott, small, small little town outside of Crawfordsville. And you, nice, nice wrestling program, done well for, for quite a few years. Okay, and again, we'll probably see some different styles. I know we're in Illinois, we're used to the way our kids wrestle. It's pretty similar throughout the state as far as a lot of takedowns move from there. In Indiana, do you wrestle the same way or a lot of maybe map type of wrestling? Big no, it just depends. Depends on their coach's style, where they come from. You know, northern Indiana versus southern Indiana. You see different things in different places. Evansville has a very distinct style compared to central Indiana, compared to northern Indiana. Okay, and they go out of bounds here, 103 left in the period. And again, Coach, we talk about in all-star duels, some of the kids haven't wrestled maybe for three or four weeks. Sure. Are they, are they going to be in shape to do this for yeah. six minutes? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, a lot of them are headed off to, to, off to schools, um, getting ready for, the, for Fargo and summer freestyle, uh, spring and summer. So they looked pretty good yesterday. We put them through a pretty good workout, so I think they'll be ready. Rhino looking for maybe a little bit of a slide by there. So far, not much action. Both of them in a tie. Again, you can hear the official out there trying to work with them here, work to score instead of hitting them for stalling. Trying to, here's a chance to score for Illinois. He's spinning, see if he can keep the toes in. Big points to score with only 10, 11 seconds left in the period. Coach, we always talk about scoring last in a period is huge for you if you can. Yeah, obviously you want to get on top. Scoring with 11 seconds left gives you a chance to go up 2-0 going into the second. Okay, see if he can ride him out. He's on his feet. Big point to score if he could get the escape here. He's got a mat returning from the back if he can. There's the warning for yeah. stalling. They really emphasize that quite a bit in Illinois. You come to your feet, they want you to mat return them yeah. as quick as possible. Definitely uh, keeps the match going, keeps action going. I like that. Indiana will defer Illinois. I'll choose neutral here. And Ortega's from Round Lake High School. This year he had a record of 37 and 12. And he's, like you talked about a second ago, Fargo qualifier last year. We'll get to the freestyle and Greco as part of this eventually. And there's a takedown for Ortega. And he would lead now 4-0. He's got the legs slid in on top. And this is a great ride if you can get that leg yeah, in. Yeah, it looks like a pretty solid ride. Looks like he's done this before. So. And it's so hard to Alex. get away. We'll see how long the referee gives him to turn him before he maybe calls a stalemate. 
because once you get those, oh, he's got both of them buried a little high maybe. But got that power half just dug in there. Watch this nice technique. Hasn't scored with it yet. Gave up the legs. Now he's off to the side. Needs to step maybe to his right and did. Now he's big trouble for Indiana. And there's going to be the pin. So Illinois take an early 6-0 lead. Now just remember, like we talked about, uh, Grano's going to come back. And at the end of the duel to our left, he'll wrestle a second time. So now we'll be at 113 here on both mats. And on the mat to our right, it'll be Jake Gross from Antioch representing Illinois. For Indiana, it'll be Jeffrey, Jeffrey Davis. On the mat to our left, Darvell Flagg for Illinois, Austin Slates for, for Indiana. And we'll try and keep you updated on each one. We'll hear flags from Jolly up west. Slates is one of three Penn wrestlers that are representing today for Coach Brad Harper. Are they one of your better teams as far yeah. as in the state also? Since three of their kids are here, they must yeah, be pretty definitely. solid. Yeah, they, definitely. They were, uh, you know, in the team hunt for most of the, of the state tournament and uh, represent really well um, all the time. All right, we'll stay here to our left. Flag's got a little bit of hand fighting there. Moving their feet. I like to see that off the hand fight. Move your feet, try and get him out of shape, and Flag shoots him out. Over to our right, Dave, or over to our right, Davis got the early takedown. Now he's got a leg in over there. A little sloppy with it. Boy, did he do that hard, though. Didn't he end did. up scoring with it. But sometimes you don't have to do things pretty with technique. Just do it hard, and it's pretty successful for you. Now he's got both legs buried. Same thing. Got both legs in a little high, trying to look for maybe a power half. And boy, it's so tough to get out of those two legs. Flag gets a takedown at the edge, so Illinois leads two to nothing over on the, our left. Yeah, nice scramble over here to our right. He got a little bit high with the legs. The Illinois boy kind of fought it off a little bit, had him in trouble, but still looks good he on got top. Back on top. Of pressure. I like the way he's using those hips off of it. Yeah. That's the secret to using those legs. He's staying well. busy with it, so they're letting him continue to use it. Be a big ride out for him if he could get it. Boy, slide that second leg in maybe. He's going to ride out the period, so he's going to lead two to nothing going into the second. Over on the left, flag's got the legs. Boy, we've seen a lot of legs here we in the are. early matches. A lot of legs early. Obviously, getting, uh, getting one here at the end of the first would be big for Austin Slates. You got a caution on top. And again, cautions for those who aren't familiar. Could be a false start, illegal starting position. First two don't cost you anything. After that, it's a point as far as the match. Another caution over here to our right. And again, I don't mind cautions as a coach. It gets you so no. you're moving instead of, I'd rather really have somebody move too quick, especially because it doesn't cost you right away. Yeah, it doesn't cost you. You know your guy's ready. He's looking to, you know, get a good start off to the, to the beginning of that period. So okay. one or two doesn't hurt you. Okay, over on our right, he's got, we call it a fish hook. More people call it, a, he threaded the needle. He's looked to turn him, couldn't get it. And the Indiana, Indiana boy gets in the scale. Well, right away in on a shot. That was Nice shot. Good, good sweep single here. And you like to Looking see that. To finish. He transitioned from an escape right away to a takedown. And sometimes that's the best way to do things. Oh, nice. That was kind of nice. a carry type yeah. of thing. Had a high crack, came far shoulder to get the takedown. It's 3-2. We have a little bit of a shoulder injury over here to our left. And or they're readjusting the sully, so we'll see what happens. 
Indiana needs to get out of bounds constructively here, get himself a fresh start. He's got, there he goes. Got himself out of bounds, now be able to move again. We would like to thank FCA Wrestling for supplying the transportation for our Indiana and Illinois All-Star Dome teams, back and forth from Lincoln College to the hotel, etc. And Gr FCA Gross representing Illinois here to our right. He's from Antioch High School. Coach Wilbur Barrero, and they've got a good, solid program up there every year. Aaron, one of the better teams in our state as far as the double-A level. Jeffrey Davis is from Fort Wayne High School, coached by Tim Greider. Had a good, successful season. Came Fourth with, place, Jeff uh, Jeffrey did, placed. Potentially dangerous over there, and we're back to our left. And 15 seconds left. Two to one in favor of Illinois. I like how active both those kids are. They're moving around, maybe not scoring a whole lot, but they're looking to set things up, and you always like to see that. Boy, it'd be a big ride out for Illinois to our right if he could ride out the period. Again, after your placing match, and he's staying just active enough to let him go. We'll go to the third period. Down three to two. Here's where, see who's been on the mat in the last three yep, weeks or not. This ain't going to pay off a little bit here. Yeah. Again, coaching strategy for you. We'll look ahead. We'll assume the Illinois boy gets his escape. Three to three. How quick do you have to go after that takedown to take the lead? Or you kind of set it up so that make sure it's there? Or do you just force it early? Well, here, got, got a one count here. Looks like a, oh, he, another one count. Great scramble. Uh, got both D legs in. Davis end back up on top with both legs. Did get a one count twice. But did not get a two count. I like the way he sweeps that hip with those legs in to get the boy on his hip, and now it's a little bit easier. Oh, slide that left hand a little bit behind the head. And there he did get a two count. Again, all big points for you. Lots of, lots of action to our left. These guys are going at it. On his feet, see how quick he Matt returns him. Nice job by Illinois to get the escape. Really tough on top over to our right. That's Davis. Is, it's been impressive. He doesn't get in perfect position all not. the time, but he just spins Scrappy. around and gets in, himself in a, a place to score. Like you said, he's had three or four one counts, and he's really been working those shoulders hard with that power half. And that's what we'll see over there. There's going to be some injury time because of the, I'm sure it's the shoulder type of thing. Slate's in on a single. Got to keep him in bounds. He's doing the right thing, walking him back. Nice balance. Good oh, Hawkeye. Yeah. Great scramble to finish. It's just tremendous balance yeah. by, by flag to stay up. Again, Big points to score if you could get them here, down three to one. Penn is known to be, they are a team that, they're grinders. They'll go for three periods. That's obvious by. My kind of person, come at you real hard for three minutes, let your conditioning pay off if you can. And we'll go to the third period over here. We're still on injury time here to our right. And we just stopped injury time. Obviously important for Slates to our left to get out and get an escape early in the third to give him some time to get a takedown. And Illinois over to our right, same deal. He needs to get out of there. Scramble, and he's just not winning those scrambles. He is coach. not. He's, each time he tries to move, he's getting himself in trouble. He might be better off just basing up and go a little bit more methodical. Flags riding it real high there, and can gives him the stalemate call. Yeah. 
That's just real impressive over to our right, the way he's rode those legs so constructively and stays so active with it. Yeah, if you were actually the scout and you'd, you'd think, ah, oh, it wouldn't be so hard to get out, but boy, is he tough. He hooks those legs in and, and the more, he's scrappy. The more you move with him, the worse shape worse you are. Shape you're, you're better in. off just yeah. kind of just hanging there and going things very, very slow. So that one's going to end, looks like, 5-2 to two in favor of Indiana. So they're back in the dual trail, 6-3. to three. We'll focus here on our left because this is a good one. 3-2 yeah. to two in favor of Illinois. Plenty and of time in the third for Slates to work for a takedown. So that's the question I was going to ask you earlier. How quick, if your Slates is coached, do you have him go after this? Because assuming he'd get it right away, he'd have to ride him for a while. Yeah. Uh, worst case scenario is, is Illinois gets an escape, and now we're in on our feet and you know okay you go one more minute but like i said pen or grinder so they that's a, they're they're gonna yeah, go yeah, after yeah. it if it means one extra minute let's go one extra minute so you're going after him right away flags doing a nice job he's actually moving forward staying very active good head position flag staying in great position moving not looking to get called for anything on deck Oh, nice shot. Turned the corner real well. Kick. And there's the two. Wow. Again, it makes it kind of hard there. Technically, the toes were in. So I got to agree with they the were two, great, but great because drag. this mat's a little small, flag was almost on the cement. Might so. even went one fleeing the fleeing the, yep, the that's hold. Big, no, that's a big th call in Illinois. That they call been, that consistently yeah, as far as I think far that might have been goes. a little bit more of the way to go, and you're still tied match. Because that's always my point as a coach when they call that fleeing the mat. Well, guy's got a hold of my ankle. My counter to it should be to kick, and if I happen to be the edge of the mat, what right, else do you want correct. me to do? Just lay there? But, I mean, the rule's the rule on the deal. Yeah, I think a 3-3 there would have probably been the best option, okay. but, hey, you know, that is the official's call. you got to go with Flag's it. Flag's got to get the point here, see if we Slate's did a in. great job keeping his toes well, in. Flag's so looking look for good. a reversal instead of an escape, see if he can scramble and get there. Let's twist the hips. Yeah, there. There's, we'll see how quick there's, there's the two. Don't, don't want to lock his hands down there. And that should end the match. Indiana's coach yeah. was really looking for a locked hand. We didn't have the angle to see it, to Did tell not. the truth. Did not. So it's a big win to start for Illinois. Don Late in the match comes in yeah, with a good reversal. Great reversal and kind of Matt presence. Got to know when to give up one and not two there. So Illinois with a 3-0 lead over there. Now we'll go to 120 on each mat. It'll be to our right. It'll be Kevin Stearns from Illinois. And Drew Hildebrand, another Penn kid over here to our right. And then on the left, it'll be Jack Henderson representing Bloomington High School for Illinois. And Blake Glagowski from Fairfield High School. Two schools, actually Penn and Fairfield are real close together. They're in northern Indiana boys up here okay. so I'm sure these two have rest done some wrestling against each other both uh, and, Drew and Blake and Stearns from Orland Park Sandburg that's one of the better programs in our state there as far as doing some things on the triple A level and Henderson from Bloomington High School that's one of the better programs in the double A level so these kids represent real solid programs in our state And just, I enjoy watching Henderson because, like you talked about it with your 113 pounder, he's kind of a stalker. He's going to come at you and make yeah, you he's wrestle for. Very heavy handed, yeah. moving well. And on another shot, see if he can keep the toes in. Didn't quite get it finished at the edge. Over to the right, we're still a little bit of hand fighting there. Yeah, a little interesting note on Drew Hildebrandt. He has an older sister who is a Olympic hopeful and very serious wrestler in the Olympic program, the USA program. And girl wrestling, female wrestling is becoming quite popular. We were up last night broadcast the IKWF, which is our kids program. And they, for the first time ever, had a female state champion in the 11 and 12 year olds. And she was legitimately solid. She, uh, 115 pounds, so it wasn't because she was small or whatever, had uh, pin in the finals actually. So that was the first ever for our IKWF. 
Well, Coach, I, I went out to the Olympic Training Center, and Coach Steiner said it best, what's good for boys is also good for exactly. girls. So yep. I'd have to agree with that if you think about it. Again, Henderson's in on his shot over here, see if he can finish it, chasing the leg. Glogowski keeps putting in that hard wizard yep. and keeps fending it off. And use the mat while he was Seems at the Seems comfortable edge there. And over to our right, still just a lot of hand fighting going on. You're talking about your kids that represent Penn High School. They wear that Iowa type of singlet. They do. for a reason Simple. because they come and stalk you and yeah. just wrestle the Iowa style. You know, if you know their coach at all, he's just a hard-working, hard-nosed kind of individual. Nothing fancy, nothing flashy, just gets the job done. And I think they represent the, the uniform represents that. Okay. Take down here to our right with only nine seconds left for Indiana. Henderson's got to get a point here. To, like we just talked about, scoring last is huge. He's up and, oh, got lazy. Oh, he was on his feet, thought he was going to get the escape, and they drove at him and knocked him out of bounds with only three seconds left. Same deal. How quick does he have to climb this? I would say pretty, yeah, pretty he's quick. Yeah, he's, he's giving, giving him a lot, lot of time. time. Boy, there's yep. the call. But I think I would rather take the stall call than give up the one right yep, there. Exactly. So. Good, good call as a coach. And stall call doesn't hurt you because it's just your warning. Yep. Use your head next time. You know, 2 0 going into second. It's a good, always a comfortable situation. Indiana takes the bottom over here to our left, and Henderson's going to work a ride. Fifth place, Brandon Murphy of Libertyville. More of a methodical type of stand. Didn't explode. Yeah, he just think, powered his way up. And I think, you know, Blake seemed to do that on his feet. You know, real methodical as Illinois was coming after him, you know, kind of frustrated him a little bit, waiting for his time, and he scored early, or late in the set first on, scored late in the first with a takedown. And Henderson just looking to get a stalemate here, trying to keep that ankle up by sure. his, his head, and can't do it, gives up this reversal, trails 4-0. 2-0 over here. On the, to our right. He's got the cross face in, oh nice. It's just a little scramble. It's kind of sat out, spun, and ended up on his feet for the escape. Now just a lot of hand fighting going on. Nice shot. He needs to get his head higher. Needs to keep Great. toes in, which he did. Great action circle and get two there at right the edge of the mat knowing where you're at and you like to see that you don't always score with your first move because obviously good kids are going to counter it and they ended up i think it's probably the third or fourth thing that happened before sure. he ended up on top another leg situation over here to our left boy those are so hard to come out of as far as a coach what are you teaching your boy on the bottom to come out of that leg as far you, as technique you know looking to take the pressure off um, not letting two get in, making sure that both of them are going to stay, you know, looking to get your knee down, get your hip down, take away that pressure and try to try to work up or find the out of bounds as fast as possible. Well, yeah, like I said, constructively get out <laughs> right, of bounds so they get called for fleeing the mat, <laughs> get those hips moving in a way. Let's to, start over. And then keep the legs off next That's time. That's right. <laughs> Elbows in. And you know, I enjoy the ride over here to our right. He's just driving real hard, and he tries to slide a leg off. I like the way he did that. You said keep the elbows in. Well, he controlled the wrist, so he couldn't the, right, get that no elbow in. There was no defensive ability and slid there. the leg in, and he should be able to give him time. He should be able to ride it out here. Or neutral in the third. Yeah, Henderson needs to get a takedown, get in this match. Needs to scramble a little bit, move, keep coming. And he gets the takedown off of a real nice move off that. He's Great takedown to a turn. Oh, turning him would be big, could give him the extra team point if they needed it. And he's sitting on the two. See, so yeah, Henderson needs to get moving and get out of there. 
Still sitting on the same two, so he can't score anymore unless he holds him there for the five count. And now he's giving it up 8-0. Uh, obviously important for Henderson to get one to take away that bonus point. And you just talked about Henderson needs to constructively get out of bounds so he can get a fresh start. Definitely. He's not going anywhere with that position they're in now. Another takedown over here, 7 0. Yeah, you're going to cut him to try and I would say absolutely. Cut him to Nolan try and get Harper, the bonus. That would be his, yep. And there he goes. So, again, for those of you that aren't familiar with the way we're talking here, if you win by seven or less, your team gets three points. Eight to 14, you get four. A tech fall would be a five, and pin would be six. That's why we keep saying, boy, these eight point wins would be huge. Nice slide, oh, nice slide by. by. Did call him out. Wow. So he has a fresh start. Does have 20 seconds to possibly get one. So on the mat to our left, Indiana's gonna get a major decision here. They'll take the lead in the duel four to three. To our right, there's a takedown to make it nine to one. 30 seconds to go. Illinois has gotta get himself moving and get that escape. And again, a program today is brought to you by the IWCOA. They do a lot of great things for the state, our state wrestling coaches and officials. You know, visit our website, IllinoisMapMen.com, and find out more about them. Big thing they've got coming up, Coach, is uh, their all-state banquet. They're going to have a guest speaker, Jay Robinson's coming down from University of Minnesota, and Jay's a great speaker and motivator, so that'll be real neat. It's April 17th up in Countryside, up by in the suburb area. And what a great opportunity to hear a legend speak. Well, not only that, but it honors all the kids who've made All-State in the high school level. It honors the, uh, their Hall of Fame people, the teams that do well. They pick Coach of the Year, so it's a really neat deal. And, and there's a good win for Iowa. They take a 7-6 lead over there in the duel to our left. Over here to our right, we're going to 126 pounds. Oh, excuse me, to our left, we're going to 126 pounds. This is Jacob Silzer for Illinois from Chicago St. Reader. We have Gage Torres from Portage High School. And to our right, we'll still go at 126. It's Brady Wilsey from Byron representing Illinois. We have Brock Hutkins from Danville High School. Brock's actually committed to Northern Illinois University oh, for okay. you. We, we stole fans, we stole him so from stole him. Yeah. Indiana guy, good kid, hard worker. And uh, we'll see, he's going to be one of three Illinois kids, coach, who comes in here undefeated as a, as a state champion. He represents Byron, which is one of our better Class A teams in the state. And he was 44-0 and, and obviously a state champ for us. So you're getting one of our better ones down there against you. And Brock Hutkins is a two-time state champion. Oh, this should be a great so one then. We'll fo let's focus on this one match over, over here. Then. This should be really entertaining. Wilsey's in the black singlet. Hutkins is coached by Steve Puglisi. Um, He's got that Russian locked up, and I like the way a lot of kids use that Russian, I hate to say, as a stall Stop, tactic, right. but just to slow things down. Sure. Where he was looking to score instead of... Looking for that trip. And over to our left, we'll keep you informed over there. Illinois has got an early two to nothing lead. And that's Jacob Silzer, like I said, from St. Rita. Gage Torres is coached by Leroy Vega, if you're familiar with Minnesota wrestling. Yeah, we just talked about Jay Robinson, exactly. Oh, throw it here. Boy, he's got that locked up. I don't know if he can get the throw part of it in or not. He's looking for it. Instead, just took the front trip to get the two. That was a nice looking move. Nice key lock to a standing key lock to the mat. Be a big ride out if he can get it. We'll see. 
Boy, he needs to just run and maybe take his one if he could get it. Now nah, he's still got that lock Hutkins up on the head. Hutkins got the wrist and yeah. making it tough. And we'll get stalemate, good call, because neither one was going to do much. No, they weren't. Big point for Illinois to get one here if he can. If you are missing Over to our left, they go to the second period, to still two to nothing in favor of Illinois. Here we go again, coach. You see the, the legs thrown in over here to our left. A lot of legs today. Yeah, that's, and like I said, it's a great way if you do it right to slow down a match. And I mean, realistically, it's hard to turn a good wrestler for the most part unless you get him scrambling. Legs, a nice ride, slows down the match. And I think these kids will find when they get to college and compete, that's going to be a money move for them because of the riding time thing. Definitely. Get that leg in and ride it forever. He's doing a little bit different with his legs. He's working the lower part of the body, the banana split yeah, type of thing. Yeah, for a split. Now he worked up a little bit to look for a power half. And we're on our feet over here to the right, four to one in favor of Indiana. We can have all 113 pound ordinaries three quarters. To the awards area, 113 pound ordinaries. Please report to the awards area. We'll see in on another shot. A oh, nice spike by the boy from Indian boy. He's got that uh, right arm just buried in there on the thigh to make it hard for Wilsey to even move. Wilsey doing a good job controlling. I think he'd like to hit a tip off this if sure. he could, but can't because of that spikes in so deep. Wouldn't be surprised if you get a stalemate here pretty quick. There's your call. There stalemate. you go. Exactly. Go to the third, or no, excuse me, over here to our left. 25 seconds left in the second Looks period. Like Torres is riding pretty tough on top, which might be beneficial for him as he goes into the third period and has yeah. choice. 2-0 lead would be big. Mm. Oh, that's another nice shot here to our right and came up with it real hard. Just needs to stay in bounds. Nice I like the way he used his shoulders yeah, and nice hip dump. To, to dump that off. That still didn't get the point because the wizard stayed in. See if he can pick up that ankle and shelf it. Great whizzer by the Illinois wrestler. Yeah. Uh, his knees get twisted in under there. So makes, it, makes it tough. Yep, no it's a good call. Nice stalemate, put them back on their feet. Big, you don't want to give up points now with 10 seconds nope. left. You want to. So Torres must have chose neutral. Yeah, didn't have confidence in being able to to get away. Needs to get short, get that elbow short in order to yeah, so score many, here. So many kids off that front headlock, get that elbow too deep. You use the great word short, keep it in there shallow so that you can use it. You get it too deep, you can't do anything with it. When he's just riding heck out of him here to our right. Got the hips in solid. Look how he's on his toes to drive the shoulders back down on him. Too many times kids lay there on their knees and don't put any pressure on you when they're riding you. Oh, got a score. There's the escape. Four to two. Unless he goes underneath again. I need to shoot him out. Nice scramble here. Yeah, oh. good movement. And the Indiana boy staying in perfect position right at the edge. If he gets in a little yep. trouble, he can just kind of bail out. Yeah, great head position. Look. Looking to stay in good, in good position to control the match. Illinois takes a 4-0 lead over yep. here to our left. We got the nice takedown. I just need to stay solid to finish off the match, not do anything silly. And, Oh, nice high crotch to a double. And there's the two there. Again, quality match over here, like you said, one of your best against one of the best in Illinois. And right now the Indiana boy's just a step tougher than he is. And 
to our left. Illinois gets the win there. And that would be Jacob Silzer from Chicago St. Rita. Now over there on the map to our left, representing Illinois will be Jared Foyles. Jared's from Roxana, which is one of the better programs in the southern part of our state. Representing Indi Indiana, we have Drake Rhodes from Homestead High School. High school coach is Nathan Duvall. And the match to our right just ended with Brock Huckins. Huckins getting the win over uh, Brady Wilsey. Now coming up here to our, our right, Dylan Thurston, representing Illinois. He's from Washington, Illinois. And we have Daniel Brookbank from Perry Meridian High School. High school coach is Matt Shutley, longtime backup or assistant coach to Jim Tante, who Perry Meridian is one of our multiple champion, team champions for the past 10 years. Just been a really solid program Perry has. And uh, they, they, they produce lots of solid guys. And Brookbank's one of those. Had an awesome tournament series, got to watch him through the tournament series and just turn it on at the right time and ended up on the podium. And then Thurston, like I said, is representing Washington High School. They were our Class 2A state champion as a team and real impressive team that they had this year. They did some things real solid. I mean, I keep mentioning classes here. We have three classes. How about in Indiana? What do you... What, we actually only have one, one class. class. Yeah, it's we're so your schools with 100 kids competing yeah. against the ones with 4,000. If you have any of that big and there, stuff, there's a lot of debate. You, <laughs> you can see uh, there are a lot of threads posted every year about w whether we should or whether we shouldn't. Well, I don't think it'll ever change. But Thurston over there is using this tip, which Washington kids run so well. They get an, uh, t off the takedown, get a near fall off of it. Well, we get ours just the opposite. People think there's too many classes here. They think we should narrow it down instead of having three go back to our old two-class system. So whatever it amounts to, somebody's not going to be happy. So right, just correct. Let the controversy go. Thurston 5-0 lead to our right for Illinois. Over to our left, it's 2-2. Two to two. We actually have a, a team state that's held by the Coaches Association that is classed, and we have three classes. It's actually a very interesting, fun, energetic atmosphere. It really helps the small schools of Indiana give them something to compete for. So it's a pretty neat uh, neat idea that, that the coaches have put together. Because we also have the team duels, which is run through the IHSA. How do you set your, I guess, your pairings for your when you have the team things? What they do is they, they at the sectionals and regionals, they, they keep score, basically, on how your kids finish and who's coming back. And there's this whole point system that they have that basically automatically qualifies some schools. Okay. And then it's by invite. They, f they look and see who's, you know, who has a good solid team and would, would wrestle well, and then they do some invites. I think there's, what, 12 teams that are invited, eight are automatics and four, four teams are given an invitation, so. Uh, it sounds like a, a nice type of situation. Like you said, gives those smaller schools a chance to do something as a team instead of trying to do it against a school that's got so many more kids. Yeah, they, they say it's really helpful to recruit kids they, in those small schools. Yeah. They, they get numbers out to, to help compete at that state tournament. Because we've got a couple small schools. You saw a boy from Byron. In a couple minutes, you'll be seeing three kids from Dakota. There are two top Class A schools, and their teams are both very, very competitive on the upper levels. Now, now, when you... Explain to the Indiana people, uh, if, if Indiana people are listening, your 1A is, is that your big school? No, that's the smallest. That's your 1A smallest. 1A is smallest. We work our way up. 3A is the biggest one okay. as far as stuff goes. Thurston tries this tip again. And I don't know if, how familiar you are with these tips these kids use. And he just, they, certain kids just do this so pretty. He's yeah, just Penn got State another likes count. to run. Uh, yeah. They do a lot of those. That's the, call it the David Taylor tip. Yeah. Because I think yeah. he made it he made he it popular. He did make it famous. <laughs> yeah. And that's all Thurston keeps doing. He's taken him down and then tipped him three times to have a 10-0 lead. Fairly tight match over here, going in the middle of the second period. Yeah, nice Still scramble. close. Oh, maybe just take the one here. And he gets Good the one. Good scramble yep. for both guys. Then only giving up one. Yeah, the Illinois boys led in position. And, boy, he was looking to try and get five. And he just he wasn't was. there. So he got smart and bailed himself out. 
So now Thurston's got to be thinking about a tech, tech fall here to get the extra team point. He leads 10-0. And again, with his tip series, it's really hard to defend. Once he gets that wrist trapped, you're in big trouble. Good solid duel over here to our left. These guys are keeping the action up for sure. Uh, big point to score. Got it. Yep. Maybe the Illinois boy got a little lazy and he got on, kept moving him and ended up moving him and getting on top for the takedown. That's huge scoring that late to take that 7 3 lead. See a great uh, a token of sportsmanship as. Coach Brad Harper from Penn is actually coaching a Homestead kid, so oh, great to see those guys help each other out. Well, that's that's what's neat. You can if you have the op you have the option, you can come and coach your wrestler. But I understand coming from Indiana, that's probably a trip for some of these guys. So it is kind of nice that somebody else is able to help them out. But again, how much do they know about this boy's style? Well, they're, they're actually they they're not too far away from each other. They're Northern Indiana. Homestead is more towards the, the Fort Wayne area, which is northeast. So and would they be big rivals then? No, no not necessarily. Okay. They're, they're far enough away. But Har Harper's been, you know, Team Indiana coach, and, you know, he oh. knows a lot of these guys. So. Well, I like the coach over there. Like I said, well, he's not just sitting there in that no, chair. He's, he's up he's, very he's, an animated yeah, and excited. For yeah, it, he's fun to watch. Not, even though it's not his wrestler. Look, he's up there again doing tell him to cut him. He wants to get that major. He's looking for the he's very charismatic coach. Tried to cut him, he didn't come up. So that'll make it nine to four. If I do my math correctly, he'd have to take him down twice more. So I'm talking about Coach Harper, but Blake Glagowski from Fairfield, his dad's coaching there as well. So multiple entities over there in the corner. There's 11-5, needs one more takedown to get the major, assuming he could ride him out. And here Thurston's got a 12-0 lead. Boy, he needs one more tip to get that tech fall if he could. A lot of time. And there's the major. Let's see if he can ride him for the next 40 seconds. No, nope, no confidence. That looks like he's going to nope. go ahead and keep the action nope. up. No confidence that he could ride him. He's going to cut him and say, I can take you down. I think the boy from Illinois is a little tired here. He's not looking. Yeah, looking a little, little, little spent. And we talked about that earlier. You know, it's been a long time for some of these kids. They take some time off after a long sure. season and come in here and try and compete at this level. Uh, Thurston's sitting there with, I think he's sitting on three. Obviously big for, for Brooke Bank to, to break free here and Thurston, give up a Thurston needs his head in the ribs. Fall. No way too high. Can't see on the ref's hand how many. I must have only given him two because he's still counting off of it. Yep. Only got two, 20 seconds left. Boy from Indiana is just going to hold that leg. He doesn't want to get tipped one more no, time. He doesn't. Give up the tech. Indiana gets another major there. They lead 8-6 in the duel to our left. And we'll go to 138 pounds over there. This will be Jared Brunegel from Belleville, Altoff Catholic, 45-2 with his season last year. And Dalen Sherg from Crown Point High School, coached by Scott Vlink, senior year record of 40-3 with a fourth-place finish. And Brunegel was second in our Class A state tournament. Again, like we talked about, that's our lower class, our smaller schools. Thurston gets a 14-0 win. And again, what a boy, great job yeah. to hold off. Yeah, Brooke I was going to say, Indiana boy, he didn't, didn't give up. It meant something to him not to get tech fall to save you guys a point. So it keeps them, the duel moving on 10-10 to -10 now. And we'll go to 138 there. Over there, this will be Zach Krause from Plainfield East. Zach from, is 42-3 and three this past year for Plainfield. Evan Eldred is representing Indiana. He's from Westfield High School, coached in the corner by Terry O'Neill. Terry just got his 300th win this season, been coaching a long time. 
Well, that's always good to see coaches that stay in it for a long time. I'm also big on getting younger people like yourself in because eventually we all get too old and we need somebody to replace us who's qualified. So it's great to see that your state's kind of doing the same thing. you got your veterans along with your younger people. And I don't know, in Illinois, what they've done is our honorary coaches for this. They bring in our three guys who were our co coaches of the year last year and ask them to oh, come. Oh, wow, that's neat. And it's kind of a neat honor for them. Over in the math to our right, John Murray representing Geneseo High School is doing the coaching there as the honorary coach. And Brunegel's in on a shot. Got to be able to finish that. Looks like Dalen is taking a 2-0 lead over here to our left. Needs to mat return him if he can. Nice mat return. Use that hip. Got the knee in the right spot. Needs to stay in bounds. Over our right, they're kind of in a stalemate position. Neither one's really looking to improve. Yeah, this this is Evans style. Eldridge is you know a tough kid to score on. Solid, stays in good position. It kind of frustrates people a little bit. Again, Illinois is on his feet again. He just can't do anything. Ah, oh, now oh, he nice tries to hit a switch. Switch there. See if he can step over. Boy from Indiana is doing a nice job keeping that leg up by his ear, though. Looks like he's going to score this. Okay, we'll see what happens in the scramble. Not much time left in the period. That, oh, that, that was kind of smart. Just gave him one. Yeah. And to our right, there's 0-0. Zero, zero. And we'll go to the second period. And again, first time it's come up, no score in the first period. I know we is, we talk about this quite a bit. Do you defer or do you take bottom to get that first point? So yeah. you got that sudden victory choice. You know, you know, being that these guys probably haven't wrestled and don't know each other, I'm assuming they're going to go ahead and go with the Go down and get your one and take the lead early. That's always the advice I give people, but it, like you said, it depends on your wrestler. Some kids, you don't have, you don't have that confidence in them on the bottom as Mother Mons do. Tried to slide the leg in. Not in real deep yet. Over on our left, Illinois boy's got a leg in and it's buried real solidly. Well, he's trying to tip him. He and they're is. Not he's giving close. Him, they're not giving him the. We do have officials from both states, so you see a little bit different style in how they call things. Yeah, because I noticed that in Illinois, not only there's a difference between southern officials, central officials, and sure. northern officials. Definitely. So everybody's got their own yeah. style of officiating. As coaches, sometimes you got to scout that out a little bit so you know you know exactly what the person's going to call and what he sees, especially as far as stalling. And over here, Indiana, or excuse me, Illinois gets the escape. He leads 1-0. Illinois riding tough to our left, just making it a really tough second period, which is obviously good for him going in down one. He's yeah. already gotten escape before. He should feel pretty confident about going down to the third. Had, like you said, huge ride out if he could get it. Stalemate with 40 some seconds. So we missed a takedown, I guess, over here to our right. So Eldred taking a 2-1. Well, that's the neat thing about doing two match. You get a chance to see some of both, but the bad thing is you don't get a chance to see some of both also. You miss some of the good things, but you at home can see it, and that's always nice.
Again, Ryden trying to slide that leg in again. Needs it to open him up a little bit more. And again, we always talk about when we do broadcast. Did slip it into the other, from the other that side. That was so. unique. Watch it for entertainment, but also watch to learn some things. I mean, I as an old guy can still sit here and learn and watch. And in other words, help kids out eventually. So just watch to say, gee, I had a good time. Learn some technique and maybe learn how to do it yourself. Great trip to a drop double by the Illinois guy on our on our left. So he's got a four to two lead. Slid the legs in yeah. and boy, he's been tough yeah, on the once legs. Once he gets those legs set, he's been real solid. He, he's made it, made a rough second period for Dalen. Keeps, keeps trying to get the shoulder pulled through. Maybe he could change off to a power hat. Now he got it buried. And he's gonna get the near fall, see what they give him off the deal. Three near fall, that'll make it 7-2. Minute left, one more turn, and he's just been really solid with it. And that just wears your head out the way he's beating on you up there. Over to the mat to the right. Got the leg in, got a little high with it. And for the reversal, Illinois boy should maybe just bail out. There's the reversal. Again, Brunegel, real solid performance. Remember, he got behind early 2-0. It stayed with it, and since then, boy, once he got to be on top, he was just all set. Yeah, See if he can get the definitely uh, took not, control. Not enough time, just got the two points for the near fall instead of the three. And that's Def great skill to have. You get yeah. on top, people and can turn them. You're he did a great job wearing out Sherg, being tough on top, ended up scoring multiple times with it. Okay, over on the mat to our left will be the first of three Dakota kids back to back here. Like I said, they're our top program in our smaller schools. Greg Krulis, record of 40 wins and two losses for them this past year. Yeah, representing Indiana, we have Isaac Eicher from Leo. High school coach is Rod Williams. Isaac was a 42 and two record, finishing seventh place. And Krulis was a state champ for us in the class A part of it. And over here in a second to our right, you'll see our double A state champ, Hunter Grau. And Hunter was one of our undefeated wrestlers, 44 and 0. So that's a good win for Indiana on in our match to, to our right. Team uh, dual scores right now. On the right, Indiana leads 13 to 10. On the left, Illinois leads 9 to 8. And remember, on the mat to our left, he's got a catch-up match at 106. So they are Correct. one match behind. Again, like I just said, Hunter Grau from Geneseo. Going to represent Illinois over here to the right, and you're, you're going to enjoy watching him, Coach. He's a real treat to watch. Jordan Vaughn will be representing Indiana from Franklin Central High School. Jordan was a 45 and four as a senior. High school coach is Gary Fox. Jordan has uh, was a runner-up last year and placed fourth this year, so he's he's been been to the big dance and wrestled some big matches. So it'll be interesting to see how he does here. Grau has the front headlock on, spins and steps out of bounds. Great move. Krulis in on a shot, see if he can stay in bounds to finish it. And nice bailout job. And again, Coach, we talk about the high school rules and so on. See your feelings on this one. You're at the edge of the mat. You initiate a move. As soon as your toe goes out, according to high school rules, you're out of bounds. 
Would you like to see it maybe go to a college type of thing where once you initiate the move, they give you a little bit more room to finish it? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you have the space and the safety of the wrestlers are in mind and you're able to put a, keep a toe in and continue the wrestling, I don't see where that would hurt. I think that would be a great rule to, to add to the high school at the high school level. Because I always feel bad for somebody to make a nice shot and just happens to be that toe doesn't quite drag in and they basically wasted. You're not going to get many good chances to score against a quality person. You know, we spend a lot of time in the, in the winters in the, in the wrestling gym. Anything you can do to keep the action going yep. and wrestling and, and, and you know, when you, when you add three or four feet to the edge of the mat, you're really talking about opening up a, a much bigger mat surfacing wrestling area. So I'm all for it. And growl in on a shot, and he'll take a, a four to one lead now. Yeah, zero zero yeah, over here to what, our left. See what we do with the defer call here. He he chooses to defer. And Krulis will take the bottom. So Growl leads four to one over to the mat on the right. And he's going to choose neutral. Oh, trying for that three-quarter Nelson here on the mat to the left. Nice job keeping your head up. That's pretty much the only counter to that. Keep that head up. Maybe always tell the kids, Flatten watch out. TV. Keep yeah, that watch get TV. That, get that elbow on, your, on the ground and the, the hand on your chin. Good job, Iker, knowing where he was at. Stepping out of bounds, get a fresh start here. The Anna boy's done a nice job of slowing Grau down. He's not letting him get in rhythm as far as being able to move him so much. So far, it's been a real competitive match. Legs in again here to our left. A nice, nice scramble to counter the legs. The Illinois boy's got a score here. He's in good position. Just has to keep moving if he can. Now, let's see if they're going to get. He's got the roll. See when it becomes the control. And now he's going to get some backs. And again, that's the deal we talked about earlier. You run a risk when you move a lot off the bottom against legs of getting yourself in trouble. But that time he was confident enough and he ended up putting the Indiana boy in trouble off the thing. So he got his two reversal and he's sitting on the three near fall. Locks up a figure four. Very solid position to be in, looking to score some more backs. Yeah, he's still sitting on his three off the roll, though. Oh, yep. And there he gives him the three. So right now we've got Illinois winning on both matches in the individual parts and the team part. On Matt to our right, Indiana's got that 13-10 lead, so Grau could tie it here if he could stay with this score right now. Again, we'll go to the third period here pretty quick. Oh. These guys have had some really good scrambles going on. Yeah, usually Grau scores off those scrambles, and your guy's doing a great job of countering him and keeping him. He's right in the match here because he's going to take bottom, and I assume Grau will cut him. Yeah, there and he goes. Four to he two. signals the, the optional start. Dakota kid looks really good, really comfortable on top, doing a good job riding legs. Well, for a small school, like I said, they're in our one, they wrestle a kind of a national schedule. They go up to some of the bigger tournaments up in Minnesota and Wisconsin, and their kids compete really well, so. So in Indiana, we have a rule where you can only travel so far from home base, so it's interesting to see. Here you say they no, go to they, Minnesota. Well, no, they, I mean, they, a lot of the better schools go out to the tournament in Ohio, Ohio the Iron, Iron Man yeah. out there. 
Then Minnesota, I think the class is up there, the Chiefs had up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So that makes it real good for kids, get a chance to go up and do all that. And think of the deal, your high school kids get to travel all over the Midwest to compete. I mean, it's, so why don't we focus over here on the match to our right where Grau leads four to two with, as you can see, a minute and 20 seconds left and see if he can get something going or if boy from Indiana can fight it off, maybe come back and get a win. He did a nice job nice of job countering. countering that snatch single. And here's where conditioning could come in a little bit because they both used a lot of energy. They have. They've, they've been getting after it. A reminder, we have classic dual and freshman sophomore state championship T-shirts. Grau stays in really good position. Hard to, seems hard to move him. Now it looks like he's resting a little bit, backing himself to the edge. Did smartly circle himself back in, so he avoided the potential stall call. And over there, Illinois gets the win. It was a major, I believe, when we lost concentration from over there. And that would make the team score over there 13 to eight in favor of Illinois. And we'll go to 140, 152 pounds. This will be the second of the three Dakota kids. Jared Packer, Jared with a record of 44 and six. Andrew Heron from Jennings County will represent Indiana. High school coach Howard Jones, Jr. Andrew finished fourth place with a 43 and five record. Here's where Indiana's over to our rights. He have one shot in him, 15 seconds left to get, in, get back to a tie and send it to overtime. And, I, and there's the warning for Grau. And Illinois is gonna hang on there to get the win, 13-13 now as far as the duel goes. And we'll go to 152 pounds over there, Fernie Silva from Rockton, Hananega. Fernie with a record of 40 wins and two losses in his past season. This will be the second Portage kid, Stephen Lawrence. Second place finisher this year. And Fernie was a state champ in our top system, in our top level here, 3A. So he's, again, the best we've got sending at you. So it's one we need to win if we're gonna stay in the duel. I was very impressed with Stephen Lawrence. He, you know, we don't know, always know these guys and we worked them out and Steven was just an animal in the room yesterday. The practice meant something to him, so it was good to see his work ethic. Maybe explain to us what, what you guys did as a team. Did you bring all the kids over and stay in a certain spot and then work out? Or? Yeah, we, we, um, we had a meet over at Lincoln College. Really nice room, nice facility. Oh yeah, right up them. about 30 miles 30 north 30 miles here, up yeah. the road. And, had a workout there and, you know, kind of told the kids, you know, kind of organized everything. That was the first time we really had met with them. And you just met him there? Correct. There. Silva gets the early takedown here and then cut him for a two to one lead. And you just hope they reported in shape, right? Right. <laughs> oh, Great nice double last leg. double. Yeah, yeah, it was really pretty. So it takes a three to two lead that Indiana does over there. Looking splatal over here to our left. I don't know if he's got it. Might just be a defense too. Yeah. I'm not sure we're gonna score it. I don't think he was gonna be able to do anything off that, but he looked like he was trying to lock it up. And Silva over here to our right, he needs to get the escape and get himself out of there and back to his, he's up. And again, how long are you gonna let him stand back there in the back before the mat return? He just cut him, good, smart wrestling smart there. Wrestling, Instead of just yeah, giving up the stall and then the escape, he just said, okay. Silver staying awful low now. He got blast double the second ago, so he's not going to come up into that again. Zero zero here at the end of the first. And yeah, we've had about three or four in a row where it's been low scoring after the first. Right now, zero zero again. So Silver in on a nice shot. See if he can finish it late in the period. See if Steven can hold on yep, here. Keeping his head high. Nice. Keeping that. Good scramble. 
See what happens at the end. Zero. Good nope. job. Yeah, real nice scramble Impressive. to not give up points. Looks like over to our right, whoever shoots is in better position to score, so maybe they both ought to be a little more offensive. Cause and Silva goes down in the second period. Andrew Heron did choose bottom. Like we talked about second. early, 0-0 zero, zero score. That's sometimes a wise decision. And we get legs in over here to our right. Again, we saw a lot of legs with the smaller kids over in Indiana. Is it bigger kids throw a lot of legs too, or is it just the smaller types? Of you know, a lot of the smaller guys up to the middle, middle weights. And there's the escape. So it's 1-0 in favor of Indiana. Over to our right, boy, he's just riding the heck out of him with that leg in. And slowed the match down quite a bit. Boy, in that first period, a lot of it was on their feet and a lot of shooting and scrambling. Now he's, ah, and then Silver gets the escape lead. Attention, we have a So Heron did make it up to his feet for a 1-0 lead here in the second period. Nice, oh, shot. nice shot. Well, that Good was finish. just pure quickness. Like you say, got there so fast. Nice high crotch. Got, got to the corner and scored it. And there's legs oh, well, again. I like that. that was, yeah. Nice trip over here to our right. Didn't score with it because of the high school rule, but I like the way he flipped that hip in there real hard. Again, we talk about techniques. So much of wrestling, people don't understand your hips. You can do all the things you want with your hands and shoulders, but boy, if you know how to use those hips and put them in the right spot, it's so effective. Oh, nice shot again. Boy, when these two decide to, they shoot some impressive yeah. takedowns. Very athletic individuals. So 3-0 going into the third here to our left. Dakota chooses neutral. Must have been, didn't feel confident yeah. after after the t initial takedown, didn't get an escape. The only thing is now you gotta take him down twice, twice. or take him down to turn him, or throw him. Maybe he's got a yeah. good throw that he's confident in. He's long, he might have a good. We'll see what happens here in the next. Silva leads 6-3, he'll go to the top over here. Arm bar locked. So now 7 0. Do you go neutral, go yeah. to your feet, try to get the major for the team? Got to cut him here. Because I think he can ride him all day long, but that's no riding time here. But we'll we see do what not he does. see a signal. So it looks like he's going to stay on top. Maybe go for a turn. Got plenty of time. Yes, he does. And Silva got a turn over here. He needs to get his left hip to the ground. <laughs> nah, it's a scramble. <laughs> And there's going to be three near fall and probably coming back to reversal. Good call. Makes it 9-5. Yeah, here's where you're silver. You just got to use your head. I don't think he's going to turn you. So just lay there and kind of make sure you don't get hit for stalling. The Indiana boy's getting a little excited here, trying some things to get back. Well, I think back he in realized that, that he wasn't going to get much yeah, on so top, so take maybe well, same come out deal. front. Doesn't do you any good to lose 9-5. No. I mean, as long as you keep it within eight, and that makes it 10-5. Now you just don't want to get thrown. He called him for a football carry, so he official stopped the match. Go ahead and explain to us what that is. Yeah, it's just uh, like when you carry a football, you kind of put one arm over the other, uh, over the one one hands, uh, one arm's on top of the football, one's under. You know, the football being the head. The head. This, that's that's the this, point we're looking for. Uh, there. So 
it can, it can be a little tight, and um, you, you can sometimes apply it as a choke. So over official to, made the right call. Over to the left, he rode him out, but did not get only the 7-0. 7-0, maybe. That makes it 13-11 as far as the team score over there, still in favor of Illinois. And we'll go to 160 pounds there. This Fun match. Uh, oh, this Steven one. Steven Lawrence in, in, in Illinois, the and young Silva. man from Illinois. Silva. Silva. What, just a fun match. Got very athletic guys. Yeah. Both brought it. I'd pay and, to watch uh, that one. That, that was, was fun. That was fun to watch. Okay, now we're to 160 pounds. To our left, Nathan Olson from Dakota, 45-2. and two. He'll be wrestling from Indiana. Sam Bublik from Carmel High School. Head coach is Ed Pendowski. And to our right, again, you're getting another one of our best, another one of our undefeated state champions, Jose Champagne from Chicago Heights, Marion. Yeah, I'm representing Indiana, Caden Whitaker from Martinsville High School. They're just south of Indianapolis. Over here, Illinois is in on a shot. See if he can keep the tie. I just push out. He's not going to get in. Good call by the ref. We're having some computer problem over on the mat to our right. That's the delay over there. Yeah, so he said that, said that there was a forfeit, and they actually have a match. So they're trying to figure out how okay. to fix that situation. So we'll go to our left here. That's the great thing about computers. When they work great, it makes it so easy. When they don't, you can't do anything about it. So, You know, with everything being online these yeah. days with track wrestling, well, see, I'm we've, all, we've all been to those tournaments where you know, it didn't work well. You'll never forget those. I'm old enough to remember back in the old days, we wrote out the bout sheets hand by hand, wrote out the brackets and all those things. Track, if, boy, if it's working right, it does everything in the world for you. Again, we're sponsored today by the IWCOA, Illinois Coaches and Officials Association. Some of the different things they sponsor coming up. Call it the Midwest National Tournament. It's in July over in Bloomington, Illinois. Last year, there was over 1,200 kids wrestling this uh, age, age groups through the, all the way through the old guys. You could come and wrestle in it if you wanted to, Aaron. But yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I'll stay retired. <laughs> but I appreciate the invite. Okay, again, we got started over here. Champagne got the front headlock on and slide or throw by and he gets the two so he'll lead 2-0 coach you talked about hips a minute ago and champagne just stopped whitaker's great shot by whitaker used his hips great stop and uh came out on top there he's part of a chicago heights marion program that's really moving their way up they've got some nice things going they had in our double a level they had five kids in the state's finals championship match so and a couple of them were freshmen so they're on their way up in that level now zero zero over here to our left i think that's four times now we've seen yeah. that over to our left these kids are and i think only once did they defer so sam did have the choice and chose down Kind of using a methodical power stand here, making sure he, nice job of getting hand control. That's why he came up so slow. He was making sure he had that hand where he wanted it and then got to his feet and got the escape. And over here, Champagne's riding hard on top, late in the first period, see if he can ride out the period. Again, now we're getting late, a little bit later in the duel. Here's where strategy can come into play. We talked about over here to our left, Indiana didn't take the opportunity maybe to cut him and get that bonus point with another takedown. See if that's going to come back to hurt them later on in the duel. Hopefully it stays that close. But it's always interesting to come down to the last match to see who's going to win it for you. 
Champagne's on his feet. See how quickly he can Matt return. Nice job of Matt returning him. And that was kind of a unique one. He didn't really trip him. He just kind of walked him into him and then used his hips to get him back to the ground. And there he just cut him two to one. We're here, Illinois is in on a shot. Just see if we can keep the toes in to finish it. Oh, nice scramble there, but they go out of bounds. Champagne's head's a little bad positioning there. We'll see if he twists, step back the other way. Good. His head wasn't in position to take him the way you normally would, so he just stepped back and hipped him over. Now he pin would be huge if he could yeah, get it. Yeah, obviously here. Whitaker needs to bail, bail out, out nice. and did a good job. You know, Caden was a runner-up two years ago, so he's wrestled tough competition over the years. And we talked about earlier uh, the Fargo programs in Illinois. Those are huge. Our kids to be part of Team Illinois means so much to them. And to go out, we've had great success not only in the Fargo, but also in the team duels, Greco and freestyle. And in the sure. end, you put that much emphasis on it also? Well, you know, we host the um, schoolboy duels uh, in, in Indianapolis. So that's a big USA event. We also host the scholastic duels, which is getting ready to come up in uh, Illinois. It always sends a couple teams to the scholastic duels. It's your underclassmen who are, who are your, your best in the state, basically, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so, yeah, we, we're obviously opportunities to wrestle tough competition you know kind of hones the the skills of our athletes champagne with that 7-1 lead going to third yeah important for Whitaker here to stay tough continue to wrestle here 7-1 you know it is a close duel uh, at 13 to 6 champagne boy he gets to that shot so well see if he can finish it we have an interesting match going on over here to our left. Oh, Third wow. period, one to one, so it might be interesting to see how it finishes up. Yeah, why don't we focus on that one a little bit, see what happens, because Champagne seems, we'll keep in form, but Champagne leading 7 1 over to our right. Illinois in on a shot again. He just can't finish it. From he can't. There. Sam's mm -hmm. been, uh, Bublik's been holding tough, just being a tough mm -hmm. guy to score on. Just keep working, coach says. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of that. Yeah, just keep the pressure on. I'm, that's why I'm a firm believer. Let conditioning come into play. When someone's as good as you are, you go after them and try and wear them out and beat them on, on a mistake. We get a stalemate over here to our right. Champagne needs a takedown to get that extra team point if possible. Well, there's a nice shot. Oh, nice shot. shot. See, See if, if he can keep the toes in. Good job of keeping the toes in. He does in. run it in. Nice, very nice. The Dakota wrestler did have a head loop in, but didn't have the hips with him, so going ahead and awarded the two. You know, I think, I think that was the first shot I saw. Yeah, he maybe caught him by surprise, but it Kinda was a beautiful real shot. Real methodical, but when, he, when it was there, he went for it. Champ Champagne's in a scramble position over here. Oh, oh, great. Nice way nice to finish up. Yep. Nice scramble. Whitaker finished it real nicely. You know, that, that's important. Keep that, win that battle because, you know, team points. Keeps the team part. Keep the team. Here we're going to go inside 10 seconds, and he cut him to make it or three to two. Got a nice front headlock locked up. Yep. Just should stay there and just. Yeah, keep moving a little bit so he maybe doesn't stale yeah. out. And that's going to be a big win for Indiana. Yeah. Puts them ahead in the duel 14-13. And here's Champagne leading eight to three. Whitaker may be looking for a splay over yeah. I don't think he's going to get the leg where he wants it. And so Illinois will take the lead over there, 19 to 13. And we'll go to 170 pounds now. And represent Illinois in the map to our I uh, got lost here for a second, Coach. On the mat to our right will be uh, Cole Witzig, Cole from Troy, Troy Triad. On the mat to our left. We have Drew Hughes from Lowell. Drew's uh, coach, head high school coach is Bobby Howard. He's a three-time finalist, who's won twice. 
Um, he came in second as a freshman, so uh, has committed to Michigan State. So you will see Drew for in the wrestling for the Spartans. Okay, on the mat to our left will be Colton Cashmore from Hebron, Illinois, and he was a state champ in our Class A division, which is, again, our smaller schools. Yeah, we have Hunter Moat from Delphi. Uh, he was a runner-up this year, had a great finish to his season. Head coach is Mike Atwood, who's sitting in the corner right now. Yeah, over here to the right, uh, Cole Witzig, his dad was his coach this year. I had been for years. Uh, Russ has been head coach at Triad for countless years, and his boy got to wrestle in the state championship. And it was kind of neat to watch a father yeah, sign that deal for a state championship. I just finished up coaching my son about three years ago uh, and uh, know how they feel. Now it's, a little different being dad and trying to coach at that level and, and then being a coach as well. So always an interesting combination. Yep, sometimes some people can coach their sons. Others just weren't meant to coach their sons <laughs> is what it amounts to. So I think the, we're working on some computer problems okay. again to our right. So both, both – Oh, no, we have injury time over here. To the blood, left. Yeah, blood okay. blood time. Over here, it's going to be tough for us. They're both wearing almost the same singlet. Yeah, they are. Okay, again, while we have a break in the action, just some background on the IWCOA, some of the different things they offer to their members. Million-dollar liability insurance policy, rules interpretations clinics help us as coaches go through and maybe learn some things uh different clinics for their officials do a nice job they support this all-star duel support this fresh south tournament that's going along around us right now they have their hall of fame they've got their midwest nationals come to our website illinoismatmen.com if you're interested and you can actually apply and get your membership through the website well, that answered your question to our left is we see the legs are in, Coach. You were asking me. There's a me, big guy doing it. You got a big guy doing it, so. In the early takedown. Match four on deck, 195, Caleb Flandera, David Collin. Collin, Flandera, 195, Matt four, you're on deck. We can have the hunt. The Indiana wrestlers just riding him real hard. All slid that second leg in, and now he should be able to ride him for a while. It's really hard to come up. I did build up off of it. Nice counter by the boy. Now he's on his feet. Hunter really trying to work hard here to get a ride out, it looks like. Looks like close to a reversal here. He gets out the back door. That needs to score. Good scramble, grabbed an ankle, did what he needed to do here. And a kick out for kick one. Kick out for the one. Boy, he just dove at him there to try to get to the takedown. All right, the hold, hold up on the other match on the match to our right, what they did was we, they switched sides for the Illinois kids. And that's why I was confused. I originally announced Witzig over here to our left. Oh, okay. That's where he was supposed to be. They switched him to our right. And that was the holdup. They had to get the computers set on that. And an early takedown gives Indiana two to nothing lead over to the match to the right. And we're on blood time again to our left. So Illinois is kind of maybe messing with you here to try and win this duel, adjusting their yeah, dives a little like bit. Yeah, looks like they're doing a little bit of adjustment. Uh, okay. Team Illinois switched their two guys. Yeah, you guys caught that? Yeah, we did, we did catch the switch. Again, Witzig trying to kick, 
And again, we talked about that earlier, the counter to that's to kick out hard, and he kicked and ended up out of bounds, and they didn't call him for fleeing the mat, which I really like that call. So it's still 2 nothing. Yeah, definitely a good no call. He was working. That happened to be the direction in which he was headed. What And over to our left, Illinois got the leg in, and he trails two to one, as you can see on your scoreboard. And he's working more of the lower body with the leg. Looking to thread the wrist yeah. there and look for a tilt. We have injury, injury time or blood time. Blood time again. Head lever over here to the to the left, not able to get his hip into it enough, though, to make it real hard to do things. Sixth place, Joseph Calhoun of Johnsburg. Fifth place, Clayton Bell of Muhammad Seymour. Doing a nice job of slowing down the match, though. Yeah, really has that head wedge out there, taking away the ability, you know, really prying Moat's shoulders to the mat, making it tough to work up. A big ride out if he could get it for the yeah, last 30 Mo seconds. Yeah, needs to work real hard here to get uh, get his one, make a big difference at the third period here. And it looks like yeah, he yeah, might yeah, get it. Maybe like ends up going for a reversal. Look for the two instead. We'll see what if he works out for him. Maybe he should just now nah, he's going to come up, keep the toes in. You know, might end up yeah, in, in a stalemate here and yeah, not get any. Illinois boy should just get a crotch lock in yeah. and get a stalemate. See what happens. And no, nope. nope. he did. He, he did give him the. the one. He gave him the one. Good call, actually, on it. And legs in again over here to our our right. And we'll go to the third period. seen a lot of legs today it's always interesting to see how they're applying the legs uh, each one of them seems to be a little bit different on how they work it like I said I sit here and learn too, learn the different ways that they get the legs in and the different things they do with their hands and bottom line is get those hips into it no matter what you do to do it Over here to the right, we saw a nice, and I always say one of the most important things you can do is correctly mat return somebody. If you mat return them and put them in a position where you can then turn them, that's a good time to turn somebody It's a solid wrestler. Whereas if you just mat return and then try and transition to your pinning combination, good kids are gonna bail out and you're not gonna score. So again, Illinois needs to get moving down here. He trails three to one. He needs to get to his feet and get the point and look for a takedown or maybe a reversal to tie it. But he's got to get moving. Can't let that leg come in. And over on our right, coach from Indiana has questioned. I think a near fall call brings the referee over to talk to him. Over to our left, he has caught the leg this time. It didn't quite get in. He's still kind of trying to work that tip even though he doesn't have the leg in because he's got the elbow trapped actually. Seems to be very comfortable there. Yeah, it's not, nothing else, he's just riding time out. Boy, he's got that three to one lead. Kept that ankle hook there. Staying on, ankle hooked with his leg, ankle yeah, grabbed ankle with his hand, yeah. and he's just chewing up time. As you can see, they're under 20 seconds. Getting a little trouble here. It seems like we. No, I don't want to make a mistake and a give up a reversal. Position. Looks like we might give up the reversal we'll here. We'll see inside the last 10, see that. what happens. As long as he keeps that elbow up there by his chin. Got to keep that wrist, and he no, did. Gave up the reversal at the buzzer. They're going to discuss it. 
Now we'll go to overtime. Good call. I mean, it was there. Yeah. Over here, Witzig gives up the escape, and he trails 3-0. shot see if he can finish this remember first points win in overtime just needs to keep Trying stepping to keep real hard ankle. oh nice job by the boy from indiana he's gonna step Talked over and win hips, the match coach. yeah that Stepped was all over and he was in horrible position, bailed out, got kind of where he was kind of neut in a neutral spot, got and a then good just hard used bump his hips. And and that big point, 17-13 now yeah. in favor of Indiana. We'll go to 182 pounds, Jacob Ellsbury from Byron High School, 42-3. And, and he'll be against Cameron Jones from Lawrence North High School. So this one, this duel is getting, getting down to the end here. We're at, like I said, 182 and 17-13. Remember, we've got the 106 match to catch up there. Correct. So it's still got the one extra match. Cameron Jones' is high school coach is Brian Seltzer. Brian and I go way back, coach. Wrestled in high school together about 25 years ago. Oh, so okay. we know Brian real well. Nice guy, good hard worker done well with at Lawrence North. Well, that's the neat thing about coaching. We see that with our IWCOA. You get a chance to, I use the word bond with other coaches, you get a chance to know them and meet them and have a good time as far as doing some things. And that's what makes the sport so enjoyable. Again, we're still on blood cleanup over here to our right. Okay, now we're set and ready to go. Witsig right now trails middle of the second period. He's got to get himself moving, get himself back in this match. Nice job with the legs again. Really solid power oh half. Oh boy, going he on. got that thing buried, doesn't he? Yeah. He had a two count, going for his three count. Two, and then we'll have to stop it because they saw blood. And again, that's. That's always a tough call for a referee. Boy, you got a guy on his back and he's scoring and everything else. You look up and you see that blood. And rule says you got to stop. Yeah, it. the rule is got to stop. So obviously, officials going to follow the rules and and pulled Witzig out of a big problem there because yeah, he was you, sir. he was buried. <laughs> Again, things have slowed down a little bit over to the mat to our left. I think they're going to try and They're going to wait until wait they finish. Yeah, but there's quite wanna, a bit of blood time on this mat. They, they want to keep you all interested to the end to see who can pull off winning the duels this year. Because if you remember, we went in overtime on this mat. Yeah. So, and they started at the same time. So it's been a, quite a long match. Boy, he does a nice job of sliding those legs in. And very effective at getting them in and applying the pressure. Okay, again, we're going to go, looks like, to the third period, 7-0 in favor of Indiana. Again, big team points sitting there possibly to get that eight-point decision if you can't. They got a potentially, boy, he's just burying that power half against him, and that's what the potentially dangerous calls have been. Yeah, 
And we'll go to the third. Yeah, he's burying the, as he's putting that power half in, he's also grabbing the wrist and uh, make, it, make it a pretty tight, pretty effective. Witzig chooses neutral. Yeah, I don't think I can blame him there. No, nope, don't want to go underneath, I don't think. Not after what we've seen so far. And see if we can get him moving. Well, that's just a nice counter. Boy, he got on top of him and there got the takedown. And I don't think he got the two near fall. Still working. Yeah, like he said, look at that wrist he's got with his right hand. Instead of really a power half, he takes it and grabs that wrist and kind of jerks it in. And there's two more near fall. Now he just went from worried about a major, now worried about maybe a tech. Because, boy, he's just burying that. Not scoring yet. Now he's, now he's got the two again. You know, Drew might want to think about coming over top and burying that half in. And see, I don't think he's got, I think he's maybe put him back on his belly and try and turn him again. Yeah, there he does. One more turns a tech. Obviously a big, big score here. Ties up the match, so looking to get the six. Yeah, a lot of time still. Well, if I'm Witzig and just trying to avoid a tech, I'd stay right there and, okay. 13-0. Again, he's got to turn him one more time, see if he can get those legs in again. Didn't quite get it in off that scenario. Mm. He's working at it. He's got it in again. Now Witzig caught it. Seven seconds left to blood time. So it looks like, assuming nothing too unusual happens in the last seven seconds, Illinois will have a 19-17 lead over on that side. On our map to our right, Illinois is trailing 17-13. So again, two real competitive duels. Get back, maybe talk about the difference between our states. For us as schools, we can wrestle 21 duels and then four regular season tournaments. You have similar situations as far as rules you have to follow. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because we we actually have a points system, and uh, you basically have to wrestle four duels, and then you you um, so each duel is one point, each tournament's two points, and you're mandatory of four duels. So you could have six, some, you know, some people have six duels, um, but, but, you know, if you're trying to get mat time, a lot of, a lot of the teams do uh, tournaments instead of duels, which I actually think the duels are a good thing. I think the more duels you have, the better it is for fans and the better it is for the sport. Because we run into that deal, certain teams, especially some of our smaller schools, they don't like to do duels because they don't fill 14 weight classes. They'd sure. rather go to tournaments where sure. their six or seven kids can go out but it does add, I always like duels, it adds excitement to, like you say, the team part of the thing. Well, we're all set and ready to go here now at 182 pounds. We've already introduced Jacob Ellsbury from Illinois to our left. And Cameron Jones from Lawrence North. And on to our right now, it's Tony Vassetti from Schaumburg High School competing for Illinois. Indiana has Blake Rypel uh, from Indianapolis Cathedral, head coach by Sean McGinley. Blake was a three-time finalist, two-time champ from Indiana, oh, committed so this, to IU, so. This one's gonna be one of your better guys here, so. Yeah. We'll. Cathedral was our team state champ uh, in the recent past, last, uh, two years, no, last year, they were the team state champs. Private school in Indianapolis. 
traditional football school, football yep. wrestling school. Heard about them through football, actually. Early takedown for Indiana over there. Again, Illinois needs to get out of bounds, get himself a fresh start here, because right now he's got nothing going for him. Very good. Over to our, our left, got those hooks locked up. Oh, nice job off the hook. See if he slid and kept the toes in, couldn't quite do it. Yeah, they, they just had a really good scramble. Illinois was in deep on a shot, and uh, Jones went, sat through, kind of looking for a little, little switch, little sit through action and then they went out of bounds and back on their feet. Still waiting for 170 pound award winners to report to the um, award stand. Little cross face series All over right, here to our right. To the award stand. Your 170 pound award winners. Eighth place. Comes that claw ride. Points. That's the first time I think we've really seen that today. Yeah, it's oh, tough. Tough to use correctly, but Six once you place. use it correctly, Very boy, difficult. it's super effective yeah. to do. Place, Very difficult. And now he's going to the tip off of it, and the Fourth period place, ended. Jake Leske of McHenry. Third place, Alex Harvey of Rochelle. Over to our left, he Seven basically place, cut him, second yeah. period, 1-0. Right. And your champion at 170 pounds, Bryson Kellett of LaSalle. Jones really quick to the corners. 182 pound award winners, report to the award area, please. Tall 82 pounder. Oh, nice shot by Illinois yeah. over here to our right left. See edge. if he can He's stay in. Oh, nice counter nice to that. Nice broomstick. Yeah, Did that he... was pretty, wasn't it? Yeah. Still no points. See how the scramble comes out. Jones just put a power half in and he'd score, I think. Nope, didn't get it in in time. On that broomstick, he should have really put his foot to the mat, which would have Maybe. Pinned. Which would have kept the Illinois guy down and he would have scored it. But Maybe gotten too big a hurry to finish it. Go over here to our right, front headlock in again. I'm trying to use it in a little bit different way. Oh, there wow. it was. It was different, exactly yeah. what I said. That was a pin. That was definitely unique what he did off that, and it was very like to, pretty. Wish I had a rewind well, on that. Well, we do. Go through and watch the re uh, replay of this because that was, that was unique. Pretty. And that was a huge, huge points, 23-19 now in favor of Indiana. And now we'll go to 195 over there to our right, John McKinney from Triad. Second in our state last last year in the double A level. Yeah, we have Jake Clamola uh, from Lake Central. He's a senior, uh, state champ this year. No, Fun guy to watch. He was exciting to watch during the tournament series. Kind of kind of came out of nowhere. He was a state qualifier last year, but came in and, and really had a dominating presence and just an awesome kid. He was fun to get to know. Worked hard yesterday in the room. Looks fairly tall from this angle. I'm... And over to our our left, Indiana gets a takedown and leads two to one. Yeah, 33 seconds here. We'll see if he can hold out, stay on top. Obviously important to get a get an escape for the Illinois wrestler. Got to his feet. I don't know if he got hand control. Here's where he's got a mat return him. Oh, nice job. That's where those long keep, legs yep, came in. Keep the legs. Get a fresh start if you're Illinois. Big point to score. Over here to our right, just a lot of hand fighting going on so far. Nice takedown. Good escape. Back to a shot. Kept the action yeah. going. 
And again, we talk about that transition. Got the escape right away, was active, moving after him and caught him off balance to get the two. Now he leads 3-2. Got the arm bar locked. See if he can muscle it through. Keep, needs to take another step. Didn't work for him. So Jones oh, shows nice neutral. Move. Well, he runs heck out of that trip once he, he gets that leg up. He understands a lot of confidence there. He wants to go he wants on his to go feet. On his feet again. He's so. saying, "I'm going to get you. I'm in better shape than you are. You stay with me for the next minute and 40 seconds." I like that confidence in somebody. Over here to Wow, nice blast double. He almost blew him into the scores table. Assistant referee did a great, great job, job of stepping of in there in the and way. protecting them all. Another takedown by Jones. Oh, and he's Going just neutral again. Him. He's just Feeling got all pretty the confidence confident. in the world. Have a blood time or. Okay, over here to our right. Indiana's going to go on the bottom second period. Tied 3-3. Three, three. Again, methodical, kind of a power stand. Came up, make sure he's looking at what hand control he's got with his left hand. Lost it. Again, very slow when he comes up, just making sure he gets to the spot he wants to get to. On the awards stand, eighth place, David Preston of Mundelein. Seventh place, Hunter Henning of Moline. Sixth place, James Meyer of Marengo. Fifth place, Ryan Bender of Prospect. Place. Looks like we're going get, to get, get going again over here to our left. Yeah, broke Jones's momentum. Boy, he was all excited. He was now fired maybe up. Yeah, might make a, make, yeah. make a change, make a difference. So. First place, Cameron Nicholas of Westville. Your champion, Cameron Nichols, Nicholas of Westville. Bellsbury in on a shot. See, he's just going to get out scrambled here, I think. And they go out of bounds. He was in a perfect shot and just couldn't stay up with the yeah, quickness. Yeah, both to legs finish tied up, and Jones found a way to get a leg free and sneak out behind. Wrestling on Matt 10 and 195 from Team Lincoln, John McKinney. And from Team McKinney looks for that slide by. Goes under him. That's warning for stalling. Been a lot of backing up there. That's the one thing these refs have been kind of lenient with. We haven't seen a lot. In fact, I can't remember many stalling points. They warn them every once in a while, but they understand what this is. Nice shot to the far ankle. Kenny's in big trouble here. He needs to bail out, which he does. So on both mats, we've got Indiana with leads, and on both mats, we got them leading in the team part, so they're going to add to your team scores here. Looks like Jones is going to finish this one up unless something crazy happens. Like a good throw. Oh, that's... Did get the two, but five seconds left. Yep, so it's going to be 20 to 13 over there on the mat to our left in favor of Indiana. On our right, they're a weight class ahead. McKinney's to his feet, third period. And now over here to the left, we'll go to 195 pounds. Wesley Kilbert, 46 and one from St. Joe Ogden. Yeah, Luke Elliott will represent Indiana. He's from Eastbrook High School, head coach Cody Outs. McKinney to a power stand again. And gets the escape. Now here's where conditioning is going to come into play so much, Coach. These kids have put forth a lot of energy. And McKinney still trails by one. Over to our left, that was a nice glass shot. Yeah, early takedown for, take for take Elliott. Down. Luke 
here's where McKinney has to get it going. He trails by a point, and his team's four behind in the duel, so it'd be a big win for Illinois if he could come through and score here. But Clamera's in on a nice shot. Let's see if he can keep that head high. That's how he keeps working to keep the head up. Yeah, being methodical here, yeah. looking to possibly get some, some bonus points yeah. off of this position here. If he could get the takedown, he could get a bunch of near fall too. Now McKinney's just looking for a stalemate. Yeah. Yep, got it. Because he went from being in good position to not having anything at all. Well, these guys are going at it over yeah, here. Yeah, a lot of left. flopping They're around. <laughs> going hard. So McKinney's got 30 seconds left. And I like that boy from Indiana. He's got a lead, and he's not out there protecting it. He's coming after nice. it and forcing the issue and things like that. I always tell him try and pad that lead instead of protect it. 15 seconds. McKinney's got one chance maybe to get there, and we'll see if Clamera goes in on another shot right away. McKinney's got it locked. See he if he's got enough time lock. to throw it. Oh, uh, wow. No, hey, tried it, wasn't there. Absolutely. And gonna, I mean, going well, out, well, trying to get a win for his team. As long as you don't get pinned, no problem at all. 26-19, though, in favor of oh, Indiana man. over there. Place, and we're going to go to 220 pounds, and you're going to get another one of our better ones here. Aaron Vinny Scaletta, state champion from Ridgewood at our double A level, 41 and three. Yeah, Sam Hipple will represent Carmel, second Carmel kid to wrestle here. And uh, Hipple is also, again, coached by Ed Pendowski. Uh, really solid wrestler, really tough to score on, kind of a hard nose, kind of same style you saw from, from his teammate earlier. We've seen several Portage athletes. Coach Coach Pendowski used to be up at Portage and moved down and did the CIA wrestling pr program there, many are familiar with, and then he went back into coaching high school and is at Carmel High School. So from, from Portage to, to Carmel. Now for your programs, do you have to do a lot of traveling or can you just basically stay in your area yeah, and really, still get quality matches? Really depends on where you're at. If you're in the Indianapolis area, there's all kinds of, of great competition close. Um, if you're you know, in some of, of the more remote areas of, of Indiana, you're going to have to do some traveling you know, and pick up, try to pick up some of the, the big winter duels or winter tournaments um, where you can get some of those competition some of the better competition. So it really depends on where you're at. Evansville is a real hotbed for wrestling. A lot of solid wrestling comes out of there. Fort Wayne, likewise, has some really decent uh, wrestling, so they don't have to go too far. And we have an area, what we call the region. It's up by, by uh, Chicago, and there's just some really solid wrestling that comes out of that area, so they don't have to travel too far. So it really depends on where you're at and where you're from. Because you mentioned you have travel restrictions. Do many of your schools come into Illinois to compete? Yeah, really um, not, not as much as, it doesn't sound like as much as other, other uh, like Illinois, it seems yeah. like you guys do a lot of traveling. You know, I know some teams from, from um, Evansville and up in the region area do do some traveling, um, get some teams. You know, I know some solid Michigan teams come down and wrestle, Lowell, Lowell High School, they've competed, uh, come down and competed, or, Indiana teams have gone up and competed with them. So it really depends on if you're close to the borders or not. Oh, we got a pinning situation here wow, for that's Illinois. Big. This would be big, put them right back in the duel. Kind of a scramble around. He ended up on top and is going to get the pin. Again, we've got the extra mats left over here on our mat to our left. So there are still three to go, but that makes it 20 to 19 in favor of Team Indiana. And now we'll step, they're trying to keep this so it kind of stays even with each other. We'll go to 220. We've already introduced the people to our right. 220 to our left will be Austin Parks. Austin from Crystal Lake Central High School. Yeah, Kobe Woods will be representing Indiana. Again, another Penn guy, uh, coached by Brad Harper. He's in his corner. Kobe is a, he was a 
first place as a junior, has committed to Purdue, I think, both to play football and wrestle. Looking big, strong looking. Yeah, good looking kid. Yeah. Penn's a very, uh, very prestigious football school in Indiana, the largest. Okay, again, we're 220 pounds at both mats. And again, these are both, both big win situations for Team Illinois. They pretty much have to have these in order to stay in the duels. Remember the duel to our right, they've just got the 285s left. To our left, we'll have 285 and then also go back and catch the 106. So Scaletta's pretty much got a win here. It's all over for if I'm figuring out the team scores to the right correctly. Yeah, you are correct. Indiana that just needs one more of win than, than out of the two that are left to ice it. All right, well, Aaron, I'm going to bow out here. Like, like I told you before, I've got a boy who's going to wrestle here at 285 to the mat to our left. So you be nice to him. We're going to bring in Rich Montgomery. Rich, one of the representatives from the ICWOA, IWCOA, excuse me, and you'll have a great time talking with great. Rich. Great, hey, it was next good working minutes. with you, thanks. All right, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Watch your arm, you have, you have your arm. All right. Get his cheat sheets here. Pretty good matches so far. Yeah, good, good matchups. Good dual scores. I mean, both. Here, uh, but uh, Sam Hipple, the weight class before a couple of the 107 was 170. You know, 47 and 0 kid ranked fifth in the yeah, nation. Yeah, Blake Rypel. Wow. 82 pounder. Well, wow. oh, he's a goer. Yeah, he's committed to IU. Nice, nice. We got zero zero over here on the uh, team Lincoln. With Scaletti and Mr. Hipple from yes. Carmel. Hipple is a grinder. This is his style of match. Stay in good position. Yep. Looks like we're going to be 0-0 zero, yep. zero on both yep. mats. Yep. I work table. I work one of the tables at the individual state tournament, and I had Vinny on our match several times, so. Uh, he'll he'll stay with it. Okay, didn't award any points over nope. on the other mat. Officials conversed and yep. decided that it was not a takedown, so we'll Vin continue with the zero zero going into the second. Then he's working a spiral over whoop. Sam just got away for a point. Mr. Hipple. We've got one nothing. Indiana. It's always interesting when we get together because you guys are at one class and we have three classes. Um, putting the teams together is a challenge sometimes on, you know, do you put your where do you put your one A champ versus your two A? Sure. And, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it makes it a little easier in Indiana. We take the top placer yep. and put them in there. So um, that's how we do it. Makes it easy. Now, I'll answer, ask a straight up question. Do you have trouble getting your kids to commit? No, you know what? It, it really wasn't that bad. You know, we uh, kids understand what a privilege it is to represent and and uh, give them something to you know kind of stay in the room and work out a little bit more for. And you know, for for some, it's just a Maybe they didn't finish their last match like they wanted, and they can come represent Team Indiana, and and so it wasn't. Too, it actually wasn't too bad. Well, we had some struggles this year. We uh, we're trying to figure out just exactly why. Part of me thinks that they've been wrestling. Some of these seniors have been wrestling since they can, time, you know, yeah. walk. And it, 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 you get to a point where your senior year, you might just want to be done. So I don't know. Still one nothing over here with uh, Vinny and uh, Sam. Two nothing over on the other mat. It's Austin Parks from Crystal Lake Central and Kobe Woods from Penn. Interesting watching the kids. They come in for practice yesterday and don't know each other and 
by the end of the practice, you know, it's almost like they've been together all season. You watch them today, they're cheering each other on, both teams. I don't know if you guys work out in advance of this. Yeah, we did. We went. We were at uh, Lincoln College, and we did a workout after you guys, same, I believe. Same, yeah, yeah, same type of atmosphere, yeah. though. Don't know anybody. and then. Yeah, you know, a lot of our guys, they're, they're pretty familiar with each other. They okay. do a lot of the Team Indiana stuff, and, and uh, they – a lot of them have, have, have wrestled or gone on trips or know sure. each other. Not all of them, but, you know, a lot of them do know each other. So, well, We're 1-1 one over here with uh, Hipple and Scaletta. Sam's making some shots here. Got caught in the front headlock yeah, a little bit. Yeah, good solid front headlock yep. by Vinny. Yep. He stopped it. Too bad the whistle blew. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Vinny realized it. Yeah. Thought he might have a takedown. Front, that's the f football carry. He's called that several times today. Yes, that's last year or two years ago. That was a big point of emphasis in Illinois. They actually had a special meeting at the state tournament. Really? Yeah, they were real worried about it. So we we lost a penalty point on that uh, for the illegal hold. So now we're down two one. Vinny Scaletta down 2-1 to Sam Hipple. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. Finish it off. There we go. There we go. All right. Great shot by Vinny. Got a nice double leg. Slid up to a body lock. Ripped it down. We got blood. What do we got over here? I think we have injury time. I think we got a little stinger going on in the shoulder for, of Kobe yep. Woods. Okay, we got an escape. We're 3-3 over here on the other mat. Got an escape. Sam got an escape. We're down to about a minute left in this match. Haven't had any overtimes. I probably just jinxed that. But Actually, we, we did, did have an oh, overtime. We had an oh, overtime had over, over there. Here. Okay, good. Yeah, the, I believe the 82-pound match. No, I take that back. The 170, 100 mo okay. won in overtime. And Vinny's got a nice, if he can finish it here. Got a single leg, got a single leg. Needs to get a little movement here. Snap him down, nice job. Crawl up, take down for Vinny. He's up 5-3 with 26 seconds left. Nice single dump that. Yeah, very nice. Vinny. Yep. He's had two nice shots this Yeah, period. he has. Got an escape by Sam. Nice shot right in, trying to score. Sam's had a lot of attempts. He has. He has been taking the action and to, to Vinny. Vinny, I think, had two shots, but they were two good ones, and <laughs> that were, made the difference, yeah, I they think. Were, they were solid. Look out here, look out here. All right. Vinny Scalato wins 5-4 over Sam Hipple of Carmel. So the dual score comes goes up to 26, 26 to 22. Yeah. Putting the pressure on our heavyweight. We've got uh, Darian Kaufman from Glen Ellen, Glenbard West. And Sean Gallagher for Columbus, Columbus East. East. Head coach Chris Cooper. Columbus just, just south, uh, about 30 minutes south of Indianapolis. Okay. Glen Ellen obviously is a suburb. We'll go to our left here. It's 3-0. Yep. Yep. I think they're going to wait to yeah, start the heavyweight match. That was our desire that was to wait on matches. So they're all off the so same Kobe's time. Kobe's up 3-0. I think they're going to ignore it and move on. <laughs> That's okay, though. We will still have one more match. Yes, yes. On our, on our left. Yeah. Alex Greeno from Southmont is pulling double duty today. Yes. Stepped up, said he would. Yes, I admire. Cover that, I admire so those I, kids I do. that do that. That's awesome. Didn't even hesitate. No, Absolutely, no. I'll do it. And yeah. when we asked him, he said yes. And that's the kind of kids those South Mount, Mount those Mounties are. They're just solid yep. kids, good, hardworking community. That's happened over the years. I know last year um, at Indiana, the morning of something come up, and a kid couldn't come from Indiana, and uh, that was kind of it was unfortunate. Whoa, whoa, what are we doing? That was interesting. 
Tried to jump over the top. Made me of a little him. nervous there, oh, but Kobe yeah. acted like he laid, he laid him down like a pillow. So that was that was interesting try, attempt to take yeah. him. Tried to go over the top. Kind of just laid him down and yeah. went to look to hip high stout and score. And well, this is this is one of those events. It's it's a, a major burden on some of them for the drive or the setup, and it's another weekend and. The IWCOA appreciates all that everybody does to put this event on. You guys in Indiana have been wonderful to work with. Well, we appreciate you and having us over. We're hoping we wind and dined you enough this year. Maybe you'll just make this a permanent site. Yeah, I can't, I can't uh, make <laughs> yeah, I a know. commitment on I that. Know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we I do know. appreciate the hospitality yeah. and, and uh, had it, we're in Lincoln College letting us come in yeah. and wrestle in an awesome room. and. And um, we've enjoyed being here today. Oh, we All right, we've got the heavyweights up on both matches now. Over on the other mat, we've got uh, Don, Dom Tudor from Peoria, Notre Dame. Corey Clem representing Gibson Southern High School, head coach, Coach Ace. Well, coach Mr. Burke, who was on the air, he's in yeah. the chair. It's like we need a hook and ankle there to get the two. You know, Illinois is in position in both matches. If we can pull out pins, we could win them. We need a major to tie on one, and a major would tie on both, but pins would win them. Or Tech Falls, forgot about that. Besides do a cut and let them up. So back on our feet over here on the left. You know, a lot of people think there's not much action going on, but well, if you're tied up with one of those big boys, you oh. know that they're working pretty hard here. Yeah, I, my years in the wrestling room, that was one part of practice I never enjoyed when I had to go with the heavyweights. It may not be doing much moving, but there's They're a, lot, there's, there's a yeah. lot of action there. A lot of energy being yep. spent. It's 2-1 over on the other mat. Sean had an underhook there and ran out of time. Sean Gallagher from Columbia C takes down the Glen Bard. Darren Kaufman's going to put him on his put feet him on for his feet. a point. So we're back on our feet. 1-0 yep. match. Yep. Wrestling on that set at 385. Team Lincoln, Darren Kaufman, and from Team Blue, Indiana. A nice underhook here from Darren in tight. See if he can shuck him up and drop in on a single. Back to action over on the other mat. Out of bounds on uh, Sean and Darian. Nice tempted, got a little over his feet. Sean's got a front headlock now, trying to drag him down. Nice, in oh, nice inside step. Just could hang on to the head. Yeah, good. Nice good. shot on the edge. Yeah, good. Nice shot on the footwork. Edge. Yep. Action for the big boys. It was kind of interesting in, in this situation when we were looking for our heavyweights. We had uh, two A state champ and the three A state champ. Both have committed to Michigan State for football. Oh, okay. And their the Michigan State coaching staff was leading them to believe that they would prefer they not participate in this in uh, fear of injury in their scholarship. So kind of impressive, two kids because of our three classes, they were wrestling side by side at the state tournament, and both of them going to Michigan State. Oh, come on. Oh, that was yeah, a nice was a, shot. That was a nice shot on the edge. Pretty close. Yeah, they're going to talk about it. And yeah, that's, yeah, good, that's a good call. Said, yeah, yeah and that's a good call. I think I'd have to agree. I think his knee hit yeah. the out of bounds, and a good, great attempt. Oh, very, yeah, right on the edge. Very good-looking move for a big guy. Made it look easy, but 
Darren seems to be a second period here. He's been picking up the he pace a little bit. He has picked up the pace and looking to, to score a takedown to finish out the second period. Yeah. We're still 2-1 over on the other mat. The only other downside of those kids going to Michigan State is I'm wondering why we couldn't get them in Illinois. There you go. Well, they hadn't signed Lovey Smith yet. So. <laughs> well, uh, we'll wait and see on that one, too. Yeah. I don't know. You look at the rosters of wrestling and wrestling and, oh, nice edge, nice edge work. Oh, that was a good call. Yep. He stepped out. Official stepped nice, yep. back, the assistant official stepped right in and said, yep, you're right, yep. good call, I'm with you. Nice edge work Nothing there, to though. talk about. You look at the football rosters and wrestling rosters on our border states around Illinois, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. A lot of kids in other schools that we could have here should have here. How many universities you, in, Il in Indiana have collegiate wrestling? Um, you know, we just, uh, Marion College, uh, or Marion University, which is in downtown Indianapolis, just picked up the wrestling program. In fact, uh, Coach Bradley was at uh, Lincoln. Yes. Yeah, and he's taken over the program there. So. Um, if I, you know, Wabash College, they just finished fourth. They had two national champs. Uh, Riley Lefevre just f finished his third title as a junior. Uh, so um, they're a D3 program. Uh, University of Indianapolis just competed uh, at the D2 nationals. Um, Purdue, IU, talk about your yep. D1 programs. Um, there's a small Ancilla College. They have a... They're, I believe, a junior college. They just started a program, Manchester, in a D3 program. Trine, a D3 program. Uh, St. Joe, um, up in uh, up in the region, up near Chicago, they have a program. So, well, they're slowly starting to work their way back. Yes. Uh, the numbers are working in our favor. Yep. Giving kids opportunities yep. to wrestle, so. I hope I didn't forget anybody. If I did, I well, apologize. I, I, be honest with you, I'm pretty impressed. I'm not going to attempt to go through all of our colleges and that. Our, our numbers are picking up, and our this, we've uh, I know Joliet Junior College is trying to. Oh, we got a takedown over here. Puts us up four to two. Nice takedown by uh, Dom Tudor from Peoria Notre Dame. Yeah, and we still have another match over on that yes, side. Yes, we so do. That's, that's uh, more a big, one. It'll yep. be a big win over there. Yep, more one to one over here with this bout. Got an escape with uh, Corey Clem. We're under twenty. Yeah, yeah we're under twenty seconds over here on the. Uh, Still plenty of time. Yep. Clem has been active all 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 match, so we'll see. Notre Dame staying in the middle, tying up a Russian. We're down to two seconds over here with uh, like we'll Darian and Sean. Yep, I jinxed it. We're gonna, you, we'll have an overtime on this, Matt. Oh, yep, that's a caution. Yep. Cannot start in a three-point stance. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes. He Just looks he, like a football player, yeah, so he I might bet be. He, yeah, there's no question there. Yeah. I bet he was. <laughs> oh! Oh, man, nice scramble. Oh. Nice scramble, took Both a guys shot. Working yes, hard. yes. Be honest, kind of surprised he took that shot right that quick. Heavyweights get overextended like that. Oh, nice inside trap. Or so step big trap. win over here for. Yes, for nice win. Yep, got it within Illinois. one point with the 106-pound uh, match left. Yeah, we did have a hard time. Our six, you know. Senior six pounders. Oh yeah, there those, are, few those and, are rare. Few and far between, yeah. and and uh, we did have to well, seek we, some guys out. But going in, we really thought we were going to put together. We had the potential for 28 state champs this year that were seniors, and um, for whatever reason, we I think we got nine or ten total. So it um, again kind of disappointing, but yeah, know, everybody has something they, going. Yep, we had yep. some, you know, a four time state champ, undefeated state champ, and I think he's wrestling out east this weekend, so he chose yep. not to not to be here. And so, you know, for various reasons, guys are doing 
different things. Well, when are they going to give it to us? Uh, we'll see. They're conversing. They said no. Okay. So. I guess that's that's all right. It was a, it was pretty close. We got a takedown over here. Illinois is up. So really, the key. I mean, obviously, Sean wants to win this match, but whatever happens, they'll go to your back. Yeah. No kidding. Yep. We're getting back points over here. Uh, this would be, uh, he's just kind of got to go back. And this is John Yosef from Park Ridge, Maine East on that 106. And yeah, then, and Alex Greeno again yep. stepping up for Southmont, yeah, yeah, wrestling the, twice today. Double duty, man. Oh, interesting. We're going to surrender a point. Well, he's got a plan, I hope. I think he's thinking he can get a takedown. Give him time to go ahead and... Well, I mean, honestly, you know, if you're, if you're sitting in the chair right here, you want to coach him to get the pin, to get the win. Um, probably figures he's got a better chance of dragging him or throwing him than he does down underneath. Down to 10 seconds. Yep. Still struggling, nice scramble. Working hard, working hard. We got it, we got it. We got the take, oh my gosh. Wow. Great yep. scramble at the end of the match. Darian Kaufman, Glenbard, or Glen Ellen, Glenbard West picks up the win. Yeah, wow. if we could have could have stayed away. I think we oh, I know. didn't have any stall calls. We could have ran the mat. You should have turned on the music, did a yeah. little dance in there. Well, that was a great effort by the uh, by Kaufman. Man, so much for my uh, opinion of letting the kid up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he did know what he was doing. When he used every last second yep. of that, and you know he cut him, and he put him on his feet. And that was the difference of the takedown, if yes. you think about it. Yes. He, he put yep. him on his feet before the, before the period started, yep. and that, he needed every last second yep. of that. So. And that match ended up 25-26 in favor of Indiana. Great duel. Competitive. Obviously, both sides would prefer something different. Sure. <laughs> but it's good, and everybody had We'll, we'll take the win. Well, sure you will. And yeah, coming in as coaches, you always you don't you don't want no question left. You'd rather just put a whooping on him and go home. We're up six to two on the you uh, are. other mat, which will actually take the yep. be the win. Yeah, so. if we can pull that out, we will. So it'll be a uh, we'll split duel, just like last year. We split it, split it Indianapolis. Yep, that was the right call. It was two. Yep. No argument there. Well, I hope the Indiana folks, the parents, hope they enjoyed the event. Uh, this was something completely different than what we normally do. We usually have host this up at a high school in Chicago. Um, just thought we'd try to spice it up with the Fresh South State Championships going on and bring, in a, bring it into a bigger venue. Yeah, a very nice venue here in the, in the capital city. Well, this is a huge weekend for wrestling in Illinois. We have the IKWF, which is our clubs and uh, Younger kids, they were wrestling for their state championships in Rockford. We had the IESA, which is our elementary grade, junior high grades. They were wrestling for state championships in DeKalb. And then we had our Fresh South state championships plus the duels here 